Join me as we meet up with Rick, founder of Finslate, and learn what sea urchins have to do with anti-fouling coding. Rick, welcome to The Green Voter. Just to give us a bit of the bird's eye view about how Finsulate came about. I've always been interested in biology and in a certain moment, of course, uh, when I started a PhD, I was interested in the marine biology. Then you start looking at nature, so you start looking at which organisms have problems with fouling, which don't. And then you start thinking, well, hey, the, uh, the sea urchin, for example, um, does not have any fouling on it. Now, actually, the, uh, the use of spines, of spines or spikes, um, it's quite common in nature. And that's uh, where we started off so we said, well, let's try if we can mimic that, uh, that principle. Okay, now, now there's a big leap between the spines of a sea urchin and developing a product that actually applies itself to a, a hull and goes through the water. How did you make that leap? Yeah, so it's a step one, is of course, eh, that, that you, you want to apply these fibers on a, on a surface. This step one, and that has been tried in the 1990s. Um, you, hey, what you could do is you could uh, go to a ship, apply uh, with a roller, apply an adhesive, and then spray the fibers in. But that's uh, it's a messy job, and it's, it smells because then the adhesive, it's a solvent-based adhesive, well, the, the, the fibers, they flow anywhere. So that's uh, when I started started the, the whole project I uh, said well that's not the, not the way to move forward uh, so what I then started thinking of and it was back then it was the early early 2000s um, it was also a time that, that I, I think in, in in North America reps uh, the car reps for example were already a bit more uh, in the market but in Europe uh, that was really evolving at that time and I said well why not make the combination instead of paying to use a rep um, and instead of the biocide, use something like the spines. Um, and what we did actually, we said, well, then let's put the spines first on a wrap, for, on a self-adhesive uh, film, and then apply this film because it's much easier to apply uh, compared to doing it directly on a, on a yacht or on a vessel. Uh, just explain now the this, this step process. So traditionally, I have a boat and what I do every year, I haul it out, I clean the bottom, water, uh, spray it, I spray it with a high mm -hmm. pressure, and then I slop a bunch of paint on it and away we go. Your process is a little bit different. Walk us through that. Um, you do need to remove the old anti-fouling paint because otherwise, if you apply a primer on the old anti-fouling paint and you stick the film, uh, stick the Finsulate wrap on it, the Finsulate will stick to the to the primer. But there's always a chance that the primer will come loose from the old anti-fouling paint. Actually, the most critical part in the whole application process of Finsulate, if you have the uh, the preparation right, uh, there's nothing uh, that will happen. So the actual application is a, a process where you're peeling the the the, the uh, this tape off it comes in different sheets I think you have a sample there yeah so actually it uh, it really comes as uh, this is maybe a little bit big for the screen but it comes in uh, it comes in rolls what you see is that the, the, the black part it's the finsulate part you have a white uh, liner or backing paper what you actually do is you you remove uh, the backing paper and the, the adhesive is already on on there so you just stick it like a like a sticker uh, mm. you, you put it on and it's quite simple it's not that it, it's simply explained uh, <laughs> we do say it's not a do-it-yourself product because we it's the same as with the preparation it has to be done properly to have the long uh, the longevity of the the product so we so far we say well do offer the product including this installation uh, just to make sure that everything is right and you don't have to to worry about anything anymore so what types of surfaces will it um will it work on which you've applied to you know, looking at obviously fiberglass metal wood as well so actually we do anything uh, aluminum uh, steel so if you have a lead cube for example as long as you have a good epoxy primer on it actually anything uh, anything works so indeed wood we have done quite a few uh, wooden boats now so i imagine the return on investment here is the fact that man if i know that i didn't have to take my boat out of the water every year and also cleaning i mean we in north america the west coast we cannot clean our boat in the water so you have to take it out so with your product i imagine because there is no chemicals there's no biocides and i saw one of your videos uh, you're actually in the water cleaning a boat and just using a scraper and just getting off any of the material that's just accumulated yeah exactly and that's that's one of the good parts about the finsulator we always say well it's not it's not magic right? so it's not a perfect product yeah, you can get some growth on it but the, the idea with the fibers with the spines is that if you have if you have any growth it can only sit on top of the of the spines and then it, there's no real attachment and that's the the nice part about it so with a with a metal uh, scraper you can just go underneath the underneath the fouling and you just wipe it off. How does this affect uh, the performance of the hull going through the water? Does it uh, decrease the speed of a boat? It depends a bit on the type of boat, actually. Uh, so if you look at sailboats, for example, we don't see any change. Uh, we have not done any racing boats. 
Uh, but any cruising sailboats, uh, uh, cruising sailboat is fine with it. Uh, so there's no decrease in uh, in speed for for a sailboat. For motorboats, regular cruising motorboats, uh, motor yachts, uh, it's also fine. You don't see any change. The only type of uh, of boat of yacht uh, which does have a decrease in the top speed is the planing hulls. Uh, so the semi-planing or uh, planing hulls. And it has to do with the fact that you lift them out of the water. There's a balance between friction, a surface friction, and, uh, and form drag, and that balance uh, is off uh, when you lift the boat out of the water. Where are you in the life of the company in terms of your plan to make the product available, first of all in Europe, and secondly, then to markets uh, like in North America, Canada, United States. Yeah, so Europe, we got covered. So in any place, uh, any country, any city in, in Europe, you can actually get it, uh, get the product. We have sold it even down to Australia. So we are working worldwide. So Canada is covered. Uh, Mexico is kind of covered. And uh, US is uh, not completely covered yet. But that's uh, that's on an as we go uh, yeah. as we go basis. Um, if I was a boatyard, how would I engage with your company? Like what's involved in becoming um, an installer, getting educated, getting the product. What's involved in that process? Now, actually, not much yeah, because it's, it's not a difficult process. So it, if you're technically skilled, it's an easy job. It's not difficult. You do need training. And so we don't say, well, we, we, we send it over and good luck with it. So we do uh, require some training. Um, but it, it, sometimes we even do it online. And so with Australia, for example, we've done online training. Same as during COVID, we've done uh, several trainings online throughout Europe. Yeah, learning how to do it, it's not, uh, it's not so difficult. If I wanted to take my boat to an approved boatyard would I need to plan this in advance like is availability of the product fairly quick yeah availability is fine because we can uh, it, it's quite practical we, we produce it here in Europe but we can send it anywhere in a few days uh, we are working on some stocks so we got some stocks in Maine we got stocks in uh, Vancouver area uh, we got stocks down in Cancun uh, but in principle if there's a shipyard that says well hey, I got a customer I got a client who who's really interested can you send it over and then uh, we can easily send it over in a few days. Would a boater in preparation be able to strip their own hull and get everything cleaned up and then the final step take it to an installer? Yeah. In general what we see is that the, the scraping down the old paint that's uh, that's often just as expensive as applying the fins right. uh, if, if you have it done if you do it yourself of course it's the hours yeah. but if you have it done <laughs> it's uh, it's not the nicest job that people uh, that also yeah. shipyards uh, they don't like it too much so they charge uh, quite a lot. What would uh, somebody need to know in terms of the pricing and to be able to budget for this type of application. Price per square foot, that's roughly 80, uh, 80 US dollars per square foot. So that's, that's for the material. And then it uh, depends, of course, on the size of the vessel, um, how much uh, installation work uh, there is. But to give you an example, if you have uh, like a 40 foot sailboat, that would take two persons one day, anywhere between 1,000 and 1,500 uh, US dollars for installation. And I would say probably 200 square foot, so 1,600, just uh, ballpark. Uh, figure it uh, like 1600 uh, US dollars for the uh, for the materials which is actually if you're looking at some of the to the newer kinds of anti fouling paints is uh, actually in that same ballpark but I think what your ROI is uh, again I can only imagine that uh, you're not having to do this every year and you can sleep at night because you know you're not putting like you said, pouring toxic paint into the water. My goodness. For me, that was also one of the, the things that I wanted, wanted to try to accomplish, uh, to, not to put a financial hurdle for the installation. Uh, you know that uh, people have to remove the old anti-fouling paint, so they do have to invest some more money. Uh, but then at least if you can say that the uh, that the Finsulate wrap itself plus installation is uh, roughly the same price as yeah, the bottom paint plus installation, there's not too much of a financial hurdle. And yeah. For me, and in that sense, I'm still the researcher and uh, I love my products. Uh, so I want to get it out there as broadly as possible. Uh, of course, for a company, we have to make profit in the end. But the, the whole thing is about changing the world, changing the world of anti fouling paints, uh, getting rid of biocides, getting rid of microplastics. Rick, if somebody wanted to learn more about your product and company, where would they find information about your company? Uh, the easiest thing to do is uh, contact us directly. Um, in that case, you can do that through the website. So if people are interested, if, whether it's shipyards or for boat owners, uh, it's better to contact us uh, first, and then we find the right installer to work together with, yeah, or to find the right distributor to work together with the shipyard, for example. Rick, this has been uh, just absolutely wonderful to hear of an innovative company 
company that's looking at a practical solution, but also one that addresses a growing concern is that what we're doing with our ocean. The type of solution that you've offered with Finsulate is absolutely wonderful. Thanks. Thank you for watching this episode of the Green Boater TV. We are looking for one million boaters that are willing to change one thing and how they do their boating to help stop ocean pollution. Perhaps this video contained it. Subscribe to this channel for other ideas about how you can create the ocean you love.